What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fath, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through this small six gamer on Thursday night. Sheets will be out tonight. I will be out for live. I'm trying to get Rody to cover it, but we will uh, be in Discord the whole time. I, I do think what you know, Rody or one of us should be able. To, there's an outside chance I might be able to get done with my doctor in time, but I just Dude, don't. I, I, I want to get uh, I want to get Goldie in there to, to host the live. I, I would love for Goldie to do it if he, if he wants. If he's down, I'm I'm into it. He likes yeah. to. Die do the two-man thing but I'll, I'll ask goldie to do it as well yeah um yeah interesting night last night i mean we did really have it right with the dodgers um what else can you do right. i said it was my favorite stack they scored a thousand runs and i didn't win i, mean, I, know. To? <laughs> I know it's one of those one of those days it was a little frustrating um yeah. I definitely felt like I could have gone a little better, but you know, it was actually for me an average, like a, a break even day, which for August this year has been pretty incredible. Um, August is usually one of my best months. So I have like six days left to make something. Not happen. over yet. It's not over not, yet. Not quite there yet. So hopefully we can turn some things around uh, on the day slate today. And then potentially this evening, although I'm not sure I'm going to be able to play, but I'm going to prepare as if I am sheets, any, any uh, overall thoughts or things you want to yes. add before we go game by game? Yes. Yes, I do. So this is, Something I have, I don't think I've seen. There are two games where the implied run total is 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 a differential of three. Like both, yeah. both, both these games, the Mets game and the Phillies game, have a three uh, discrepancy in implied total, and that's what you get when you get like maybe the two of the worst hitting teams on the road against two of the best pitchers. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, Fortunately, I guess um, they they made it so it's it is difficult, I suppose, to play the two of them um, and still get the hitting you want. Um, although there's always ways to do it, I guess. Um, but uh, I've, I've been interested to see how you attack this lane. By the way, the, the, the Colorado, I was I was hoping I don't think I've ever seen this. I'm sure it's happened in the playoffs, maybe. But um, to have an implied run total of less than two, I still have not seen that yet. Um, this is Colorado's 2.02. Um, yeah, it could that, drop. It's as close as it can get, though, right? That's like, yeah. <laughs> I've seen it a couple times with Degrom, but yeah. it, it was like it was like extreme circumstances, end of year teams playing their call ups, kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, in that situation, if you're if you had to just bet straight on the run line, I think you just always take the other side of the two. You know, <laughs> take the take the over the two. Um, it's but again, it's it does seem like we have some real obvious. Like I don't even know. I mean, the early projections are probably underrating how I don't know how hard it is. I guess it is hard to get them in in certain aspects, but we'll talk about it. Let's go through it um, game by game, because I want to see if there's some things we can do to get off. You know, it's a small slate, uh, sort of like this morning slate. You want to try and find a way to get off of this uh, this chalk. And it's my, it's tough to do. Um, my, my, by the way, my initial ownership projection on DeGrom, it can't obviously be this, but but mine was 91 <laughs> percent. That see that, that that I think is a lot closer than the other fifty percent that are out there. I just don't see that as being realistic. No, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I think that I think, I think in cash he's probably like close to a hundred, right? I mean, I think I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, I think somewhere in the in the high eighties in tournaments. Right. Um, I do think a couple of people will play like Lance Lynn and Jamison Tyon or something. Oh, to get to the okay, that's possible. Potentially even Lyles, just because I mean the White Sox against righties, but I don't know um all right well, well let's let's let, let's talk about it then so let, let me yeah. pull up my screen and uh we'll see if we can't figure out something to do here uh okay all right so so yeah so so let's start with the white Sox game because i do think that that is a a potential spot even though look it's bi on, th on big massive slates i don't want to use the white Sox in general against uh righties uh but on this slate, I'm more than happy to do it, especially because they are one of the cheaper stacks. They allow you to double spend up. And I have the White Sox rated extremely highly. Um, if you wanted to uh, to go, you know, to four man, five man, whatever you want. You, you got Sheets, Pollock, Moncada, Vaughn, Abreu are too cheap. Uh, you can throw in Andrus or, or Harrison. Really all the lineup all the way through. The only one who's expensive is Luis Robert. Um, so if you can find a way to get him in, he's going to be the low owned one of the bunch, but I, I like this. Uh, I actually like the white Sox as a potential stack tonight. The problem is I, I think it's pretty rare. They outscore the Phillies, Houston, um, and Toronto, but I don't think it's that far unreachable. And I think that, uh, again, you don't have to make a full stack out of it. So I, I my early, my early look is that I do like the white Sox. I'm not going to play Lance Lynn, but I think he deserves, uh, he deserves a little bit of love. Uh, I think people will play Tyon instead of Lynn. 
And I think that, you know, look, the, the, we know that, that the, the, the low strikeout rate for Baltimore against righties um, feels like that happens every matchup for Lance Lynn. But I, I'm, I'm still OK with the idea of using him if you want to spend money. I just don't think it's a priority for me in, in any way. And and at the same time, you could argue for for potentially Lyles on the other side of this. Um, for what it's worth, Lance Lynn does have a five and a half K prop uh, today. And, and it's, you know, basically even money on that five and a half K prop. So I think that I think he's reasonable. I just don't think it's going to be it's not a thing I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm getting um, uh, I am definitely getting a uh, decent amount of the White Sox in my early builds, not, they're not my number one, but uh, they're, they're certainly up there. Um, and right. Currently um, my initial stuff is just jamming in the two top pitchers. Um, so I'm not really getting to Lynn, the Lynn Lyles thing and, or something like that yet. Um, but again, if you are going to want to pay up for hitting and not worry about, you know, the, about, about who you play on a team, for example, um, then these guys, I think both become sort of in play. Um, yep. uh, both Lynn and Lyles. I don't have them as particularly great plays, especially relative to the you know the raw points of Dugam and Nola. But you know, remember, like for for each, if you sub, if you uh, give up, uh, say Nola for Lyles, right? That's thirty three hundred. If you make up for that with two big hit, two big bats that you otherwise weren't going to get, who could each get like twenty five or something like that, and Lyles just even gets like fifteen, it, you can probably make it work. You know what I mean? Um, uh, considering the ownership as well. So for now, I'm not going to probably do it, um, but I, I can certainly see those types of builds. Yep, absolutely. All right, well, let's uh, let's jump over to Philadelphia. I think that Philadelphia is the, uh, the, the, they seem like the most obvious chalk to me. And I think that that makes sense. And NOLA is the obviously the, the obvious SP2. So basically what I would do in this game is, I don't want to play a, a full stack of a routine that's going to be really popular. Uh, I'm okay with if you want to take a bat or two, but I just I don't want to play this much chalk on a on a slate like this. Now, if if people to get to get you know both top pitchers in and and these guys are kind of tricky, so maybe they don't end up quite as high owned as I think. But as I look at it right now, I think that they're going to be the chalkiest of the stacks. So I'm trying to avoid it. And if I had to pick pick a pick one of them, it probably would be you know, price considered probably be Hoskins or Castellanos just because of the price. But um, obviously they are a very logical stack, which means I'm going to try to avoid them. And so I, I, I want to have some fun. I mean, it's, it's, um, what's, 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 what I was going to say. It's, um, uh, it's, it's not live, so you can't really make this work, but I want you guys to think, and I'm going to give you the answer at the end of who you guys think based on my current builds, my highest owned stack is. Now, again, that doesn't mean the one I like the most. I just meant based on builds, who do you think my highest owned stack is? So you're coming with Cincinnati. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, when we, we'll, uh, we will, uh, I'll tell you when it gets there. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll wait to the end, but I actually am not getting that much Cincinnati actually. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, just because where, where you like to see leverage, whatever, when you have these guys that project so through the roof, it's just sometimes hard to do, um, even for Saberson. So I like Nola. <laughs> I, I one thing about Philly besides them being popular. First of all, I got very lucky last night, sort of. I mean, it didn't really work out, but I full faded Philly. And let yeah. me tell you something: Philly should have gotten thirty-seven runs in that game. That pitcher for the Reds is just the worst. Um, couldn't find the play, couldn't do anything. The bases were loaded the whole game. Pretty much, he was in there. And the, they got six runs all on, like, singles and walks. You know what I mean? That could have been a freaking train wreck, okay? And they only ended up scoring seven for the, for the, for the game, okay? Um, here's, the, here's my case against Philly, which is sort of going to be the case I make against the Mets in, 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 in a few minutes. When you have these guys that are big three-to-one favorites or four-to-one favorites and these pitchers that just want to just keep on freaking rolling – I think that sometimes the hitters and the batters just also kind of want to move the game along. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not saying they strike out on purpose or, or do whatever, but it just seems as though, you know, that you don't get like 10, 11 runs when these, when these aces are just going to be cruising through the game. We're going to talk about that when we get to the Mets, because one thing about DeGrom, which has been the, the case for years in New York was the whole city just like, just goes on tilt because of the lack of run support this guy has always got. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just bananas. Now I know analytically, it makes no sense. And analytically, it's probably just noise. I mentioned this to Cardi and say, Oh, you freaking fish. It doesn't make a difference, but it happens so often that it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy sometimes, you know, like, like, mm -hmm. like the Mets will be up there. Listen, you know, they got, we don't we need to score two runs to win the game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And no one's expecting us to do much anyway. So, so that's going to be one of my cases against these, that's Philly against the Mets, that even if you're in a good spot, if you have this ace that just kind of wants to move the game along and get, do whatever, maybe it's not the greatest play. So I'm actually going to be fading Philly again tonight. Um, uh, so that's just going to be where I'm at. So I do like uh, Nola, but I don't like any of it. Yeah. And uh, for what it's worth, that's one of the things about Philly that, you know, even though leaving the runners on part, part like they, they have two real power hitters in, in Hoskins and, and uh and Schwarber, but nobody else is really truly a power hitter on their their team so um they, you know they miss Bryce Harper in that lineup so they they do end up leaving a lot of those runners on and they're they're also patient so they end up getting runners on a lot all right let's uh let's jump over to the Mets game talk about your thoughts here I mean I I, I don't I, like you don't have to decide on DraftKings and there's a big enough price gap where the ownership will probably even out a little bit on FanDuel but I don't really know how to, why we would need to talk about DeGrom versus Nola um, I think that they're both obviously awesome options. I don't, you know, the Grom is the guy you want to get in in general. Uh, there's not enough of a price gap. He did finally throw 95 pitches. Now, if they're up like eight, nothing in this after six or something, and he's only thrown 75 pitches, I wouldn't surprise me if they, if they stopped him there. Um, but I, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's really hard not to, not to argue for DeGrom Nola as a, as a one, two, even, I mean, trying to get different, you're talking about, Gaussman, Garcia, Lynn, and Tyon. And it's just so hard for those guys to outscore these guys on a regular basis here. So uh, what, what do you, what do you think about this? I like to Grom and I'm probably going to play him hundred percent. Yep. I think that's fair. Um, and, uh, and how about, how about as far as the hitting goes like for the Mets? Because um, I, I actually, I mean, yeah, the Mets historically that there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't like them, but they, this is a much better lineup, obviously, than they've had in years. It's pretty decent hitting weather, considering that it's in, you know, in, in, at the Mets, where obviously it's not a not a great hitters park. Um, so I, I, I'm 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 OK with the I'm, I'm totally OK with the uh, with the Mets today. Um, nothing with Feltner like in the bullpen sucks and they're not playing for anything. Um, but I, I definitely could get behind the Mets. Is this right that they're going to be as low owned as I'm looking at? That can't be right, is it? Well, I mean, people are going to play, I think, the Yankees. Uh, I think people are going to play Toronto. I mean, excuse me, Houston. People play Toronto. So people play Philly. You know, yeah. I think the Mets are playable, but, you know, they are I, I don't think that they're going to be that choppy. Yeah, I'm looking at what – I mean, the early SS projections are really, really low. Um, like nobody above like 8%. <laughs> um, and maybe, maybe that happens. Um, if if the Mets are really low on, I think they're extremely viable. They're just expensive. That's really why it's hard to play both studs with them. But you might have that Brett Batty in there at at two point five k to to round out a stack if you wanted to go that route. Um, Vogelbach instead of uh, will save you some at first instead of playing Alonzo if you wanted to go that route. I, I think they're really viable. So I, I would let ownership be the deciding factor for me. I don't mind taking the Mets here over the other stacks if, in fact, they are going to be sub ten percent owned. Yeah. So by the way, just not to be off brand, I I will have maybe a little bit of the Reds <laughs> um, before, before whatever, but, but they're not going to be my, the, the, the main one. Um, okay. So we actually skipped over um, Toronto, Boston. I was so excited to talk about a 95% on pitcher that it's the same time. So, so it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I guess Gaussman's in play, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's just kind of hard to play him. Um, but it, look, if you if you told me Nolan and what's his name were gonna bust, I would say sure. <laughs> let's, 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 let's play Gausman. Um, um, I'm getting a little bit of Toronto in my initial builds as far as hitting goes. Not getting any of Boston, and that's pretty much the size of it. Yeah, I like um, the Toronto let us down yesterday. Uh, you know they they have that. They're a little bit of a, a boom bust offense, maybe more than people realize, but. I, I'm totally on board with going back to Toronto. It's just the pricing is going to make it a little bit tough. Um, I'm very good. Like I obviously want to play players in Fenway. I want to play teams on the road and I want to play players, uh, hitters against Cutter Crawford. Although we see that 
with Bello last night, he did show up and uh, you, you, these, some of these young guys actually have some talent. Um, Crawford has really not been very good. Uh, he gives up a lot of power. You can run on him as well. And it's really just a matter of, can you fit in the blue Jays? Um, the, the cool thing about the blue Jays, when you stack them, I always try to point this out. It's weird because the Dodgers are, are, are one of these teams too, who usually get the home runs when they, when they go crazy. But Last night, I think they had, they had the one home run from from Austin Barnes, which I did I did throw out there as if you're going to play a cheap catcher, you should play Austin Barnes last night. He had the nice. slam. Um, but uh, but I do think that you know the the Blue Jays are certainly looking like they're going to be have some ownership. And I, as much as I like them, I'm happy to switch over to the Mets if their ownership is really like three times what the Mets are. Um, but as of right now, I do think that they make a lot of sense. Again, they're expensive. Uh, the bats you want are are, are pricey, so. It's just a matter of whether you can fit them in and how much chalk do you want to eat. Uh, and and you could find ways to play little pieces and, and get them in still with the double spend ups, but it's, you're not going to get in like Vlad Springer, T Oscar and Kirk into a lineup with the, with the studs without doing some weird stuff. So Toronto would be, would be if I had to take a bet on what team scores the most fantasy points tonight, they would be right there at the top with Philly, but with their ownership and their prices, maybe there's something else we can find to do. I, I keep going to keep going back to the White Sox thing. I think that's probably what I end up doing here. I, I currently have Toronto as the highest owned stack. I think um, you're right. Uh, so I, I don't need that. I mean, I, I would, I, I just assume play play and we'll get to this right now. I just assume play Houston, right? Yeah. Um, so Houston's home against uh, Chris Archer never seemed to get his career going, you know, um, and Houston's hitting the ball, uh, and they're at home, and you know they're 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 in play. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to I want to tilt for just a second. Yeah. Um, so I was watching the last couple of games, and I don't know why this this really bothers me. I guess it really shouldn't. First of all, uh, what's his name? Correa from Minnesota. Yeah. Has been great in the series. He's made a couple of really good plays. He's done whatever. And he basically like robbed like Altuve a couple of times. And all Altuve does is smile and shake his hand and pat him on the butt and wave to him and like pump his fist because they're former teammates. Dude, just I, I don't know why it tilts me so much. I have no I have no <laughs> idea why it is. You're old school. That's why. I know. I know. But but uh, I, but, he, but I guess because they cheated like the whole wink wink between the two of them. I, I just don't I just kind of don't want to hear. Yeah, it. I know. It's kind of gross. They're, they're brothers and cheating and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the only thing. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, I mean. Uh, Altuve is hitting the ball really well. So I play him. Tucker, I'll, I'll always play him. I'll always play Alvarez. Um, and uh, and they, they seem really in play. I'm not going to get to, I just, again, I just don't think I'm doing the Garcia thing. Um, I, I think I'm just, I think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to lose. I think I'm going to pay up for the two pitchers and, 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 and make it work. Um, hope it's a, you know, hope that hope it's 100, 115, 120 points just kind of dominates the slate, I guess. Um but I guess again, if if you told me I had to pick someone else, I mean between Gaussman and Garcia, um, I don't know. I call I get maybe a draw. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I think that I would go Gaussman, but I I do think that's one interesting thing you could do if you're multi-entering tonight is to play those two and skip the other two and literally play whatever stack you want. And just no one's going to have that combination. And if they can each get you twenty, the low twenties, there's a there is a path where. DeGrom only throws 80 pitches um, if there's if it's, a, if it's a huge blowout after six innings or something like that. And maybe Colorado goes out there hacking early on so they don't get as many strikeouts. Um, but it's pretty hard to find. And and and, there, and Gausman has a legitimate chance to outscore Nola for sure, um, even though I, I do prefer Nola by a good bit. Um, just trying to get, you know, trying to find ways to get different here because there aren't a ton of them. OK, so so I'm going to just so you know, I'm going to be uh, on a plane. Um, at lock probably and when this even when this game is going off because i'm you know flying out west but i just just to give you just to tell you true transparency right now because things could change i'm going to change my lines to do whatever currently in my builds i have 40 percent open okay that that's 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 kind of where i am right ooh, now ooh. and 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 a whole bunch of game stacks from this game oh. um that's just where i am and I, you know it makes sense because talion is going to get owned a little bit you know what i mean um I, I have him at 20% right now. And yeah. if you're looking for something cheap to go along with your double stack of, of, the, of those pitchers, I guess this is what makes sense. So currently right now, those are my builds are like 30, 40% Oakland and probably 
like a bunch of, of, of game stacks with Oakland and the Yankees. So that that's where I am right now, six hours before, six hours before lock and eight hours before game time. And God knows what lineup change they made. But again, just so you know where I am right now, uh, probably a terrible idea, but that that's where I'm right at this moment. Mm, no, I think that's kind of interesting. It's a small slate, like get a little different. Um, I don't even think you have to go for a full stack of Oakland. You can, you can play a four man, a three man, yeah. and you'll still be off the board. There's not, they're not going to, they're not going to be that popular. Um, I don't think the Yankees are going to be especially popular either. And yeah. that could be something to do. I mean, you've got Cabrera's 2K who sort of offsets some of the pricing things. Judge, who doesn't matter that it's only 67 degrees because he can hit the ball out of any stadium. Um, Donaldson is reasonably priced. Stanton should be back in the lineup tonight. So I'm I'm definitely OK with the with both sides of this. It's uh, the Yankees because they're pricing that, you know, they're with those other teams that are going to rank a lot better than them. So I think they're going to be a lot lower owned. Obviously not as good at hitting conditions, not a great hitters park. But Judge and Stanton and guys like that can hit them out of any stadium. So um, I kind of like the idea of maybe a mini stack for the Yankees to go. I mean, here just to, just to show you, I'll bring, I'll bring here. This is my this is my saber symbol literally right now. It it is an over, overall there is forty percent Oakland, forty percent Yankees, and then the White Sox, and then yep. the Reds. Yeah, you know that. So this is this is what this is what ugliness looks like. But who knows? Ugly can win. Absolutely, it's baseball. It's baseball. Um, I kind of like that. So I, I'm, I'm probably going to end up higher on the White Sox. I don't think you need to fully stack. I think using Judge as a one-off or playing the Yankees is a good idea. I think that um, getting pieces of Minas- of uh, Houston, um, that slightly lower ownership than Toronto and Philadelphia is probably the route I would take on this slate. And I'm going to probably use Nola and so some combination of Nola, Gaussman, and DeGrom. And that's pretty much it. All right. All right. Well, so with that, guys, good luck to everybody. I hope you guys crush it. And uh, let's see some screenshots in chat and and sorry, Discord. And uh, let's make some money today. Hopefully we will have somebody. Uh, hopefully it'll be Rody at 6 Eastern because I am going to be at a doctor's appointment. And I'm wondering if I'm even going to be able to play tonight. So Sheets, have great. Tra- oh, good luck on your travels. Have a great yep. time out there. Uh, you'll, you'll, you guys will hear from me. I'll be, I'll be in and around. All right. Sounds good. All right. Good luck to everybody. All right. Later.